Okay, so what we have here is an example. Now, in this example, the universe comprises of all real numbers. And we have the open statements px, qx, rx, and sx given by these following open statements. Now, using these open statements, what we could do here is we could determine the validity of all these other uh, statements with the following existential quantifiers attached. Now, what I want to show you here is that uh, using real numbers, for example, on uh, negative 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, using these real, num real numbers, we can find out the validity of these arguments. Now, the first uh, question that I gave myself is px and rx. Now, if you wanted to establish the validity of this argument, all we have to do is we grab some integer, for example, like what I have written here, like using a 4, which is a number from the universe of all real numbers. Using 4, we plug it into px. Now, 4 is greater than 0, so that's true. Now, we plug 4 into rx, 16. Uh, 4 squared is 16 minus 12 minus 4. So that's pretty much 16 minus 12, which is 4 minus 4, which gives us 0. That is also true. So in this case, true and true equals true. And the condition here is that there exists, so ex, there exists some x that makes this statement true. And we had just proven that. 4 is a statement that makes it so that there is some x that makes this statement true. Now, number two, for all x, px implies qx. Now, what we want to do here is, again, we want to just take a random number from the universe of all real numbers, for example, and, um, for example, what I have here is replace x by a negative number that will give us true, uh, or replace x by a non-negative number that will also give us true. Uh, for example, <coughs> if we got a if we got a negative number, then we, px would be zero. But if we have a negative number for qx, then um, the square of any negative number is is a positive number. So that is a one. Zero plus one is one. That is true. And if we do the same for with a non-negative number, that is also true. Now the third one we have here is qx implies sx. Now that is false. If we just replace x by 1, that will give us uh, 1 implies 0 because 1 minus 3 is not greater than 0 and that will give us um, the statement that uh, falsifies this or that will give us an answer that falsifies the statement. What the statement is telling us is that for all x this is true. Well, we just contradicted that by using one, by saying that there is just one number in our universe of all real numbers that makes the statement false. So that's a simple example of how we use open statements and how we use quantifiers to establish validity of arguments. Now, when we say for all x, px logically implies uh, ex, px, we mean uh, ax, px implies uh, ex, px. Now that is a logical impl implication, meaning that ex, px is true whenever ax, px is true. But what I want to emphasize here is that it doesn't follow that if ex, px is true, then ax px must be true so uh, what i want to emphasize here is that for every px um there that logically implies for some px so or i should just say that uh ax px logically implies ex px but it doesn't go the other way around ex px does not logically imply ax px in general so that is just a rule that you should remember, but it's not <coughs> super important that you do. Excuse me. I honestly didn't didn't remember this this rule 
until I was doing these notes again for you guys but yeah it's just good to know it's not really important such that you have to have it have to keep it in the front of your minds so a little bit more before we finish the videos the truth value of quantified statements they always per depend on the universe prescribed so for example the statements that we just went through in the in the last page they might be true in some other cases in some universe so the truth value of quantified statements they always depend on the universe prescribed so for example px um the statement for px is x squared is greater than or equal to one uh, for positive integers ax px positive real integers ax px for either universe ax px what we have, want to do here is we want to find the truth or the or the validity of these statements now positive integers ax px well there is this is always true because if we just put like one for example then the square of one is one and that will make the statement true so this is a true statement positive real integers this is false if we use for example half that is a counter example and if you just square half it won't be greater than one so if we just use that here so 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 it will give you 0 0.25 which is not greater than one so that will give us false a uh, perfect counter example for either universe ex px there exists some x such that x squared is greater than or equal to one well that is true because uh, this this uh, statement two is pretty much inclusive of statement one so if there exists some integer then for statement one then of course for either universe uh, there would exist some x such that makes the statement true now i just want to go through this last definition before we stop this video so let px qx be open statements defined by a given universe when px and qx are called logically equivalent this is what we write we write ax um ax px qx and we have this, these uh double arrows with with a uh, equal sign in between or I just call these like bolded, bolded double arrows, but you can call them whatever you want. Just remember that when they're called logically equivalent, you you, you write the logical equivalents like like this. And when biconditional P A Q A is true for each replacement of A from the universe, then we have a logical equivalence here. P A is logically equivalent to Q A for each A in the universe. That means for every A in this universe PA is uh, biconditional to QA for every A that then we can we could use this statement of PA and have this double barred biconditional with QA for each A in the universe. Now PA is logically logically implies QA for each A in the universe. This is what we write. And what that pretty much means is PA implies QA. Uh, that statement is true for each A that exists in the universe. Uh, again, we can write uh, PX logically implies QX in, in that situation. And lastly, uh, for every A of, or for all X's, PX is by is logically by condition or logically equivalent to qx if and only if uh, for all x's px is uh, logic or logical px logically implies qx and for every a or for all a's qx uh, logically implies uh, px so when we have ax px logically implies qx and ax qx logically implies px then what we have is for all x, uh, px is logically equivalent to qx. And that finishes off this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe. I could leave some comments in the comment box, or yeah, you could leave some comments in the comment box. But I'm not sure if I could really respond right away because I'm really busy these days. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in.